Now, to continue this discussion, I am delighted to welcome some folks to the stage to talk about their work that they're doing in AI. Please welcome Vice President of Supplier Alliances at Aero, Matt Brennan, EVP Global Head, <laughs> AI and Cloud Native Labs at HCL Tech, hey, Matt. Alan Thanks Flower, for coming. <laughs> Vice President of Security hey, at Cisco, Good Thomas to have Brown, you here. and Global Head of Infrastructure Partners and AI Ecosystem hey, at Thomas. Red Hat, Thanks for Ryan Hayley. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ryan. Thank you. All right, gentlemen. Thank you for joining me out here today. Thank you. Super excited to talk with all of you. All right, so let me start. From your perspective, how does being part of an ecosystem, as the folks here in the room, um, how does that sort of help shape the way that we all work together in order to meet these objectives, right? Because they're really business mm -hmm. objectives that together we're trying to deliver. So Thomas, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with you. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I think AI is so important. Partnership, ecosystem, is key because I think the open source and the strongest ecosystem will win. I think all of us here on stage, we share a common view of how AI should be. AI should be open, AI should be accessible, AI should be safe, and AI should run on any infrastructure. And I think open source is the key to achieve that because open source leads to innovation. And this is what I heard all week, like exactly this line. What is most important to me is that I want AI to be as open as Linux. I think it's great like what you're doing in security, you know, Cisco's doing security and what Red Hat's doing with inference, like these are both capabilities that are gonna help propel and accelerate AI into production. How about you, Alan? Well look, you know, Stephanie, when I reflect on our partnership of more than two decades, right, yeah. uh, HCL Tech and Red Hat, I mean, if it means anything to me, it means acceleration, right, in terms of we can move faster and we can deliver more value to our client when HCL Tech and Red Hat come together, right? Now, I think to this point around the speed at which the AI sort of marketplace is working, this is really where the value of ecosystems is, is magnified, right? Your ability to work with us to bring in a broader ecosystem, model providers, for example, is what we all need to take robust, safe solutions to the market. Yeah, that's that catalyst aspect we get really excited mm -hmm. about here yeah. at Red Hat. How about you, Matt? You know, I think what's so great about kind of being in the position that we're in as a distributor is we have such a unique view on the ecosystem. And I guess what I mean by that is you showed a lot of charts with Dell and IBM and Red Hat and NVIDIA and HP and others. And we really are able to look at each and every one of those suppliers, what their AI factory and their solutions are. And then we obviously take the partners from our perspective, the integrators, the CSPs, the MSPs, and we're in essence kind of the great aggregator, yeah. right? So I think it's really never before has community, open source, meet in the channel really been so important because literally this AI journey changes weekly. Right? So we're heavily invested in our partners. We want to make sure they have specialized skills, service capabilities, and we're fortunate enough that we support nine of the 13 partner practice accelerator partners, that's a mouthful, uh, at Aero. <laughs> and uh, we encourage the partner ecosystem to really share their capabilities through our AI center of excellence, and that's where we can do demos and proof of concepts and real life multi-vendor solutions yeah. that are going out to market. So, we help identify the market demand. We bring those repeatable AI solutions to the ecosystem, and frankly, it's an incredibly exciting time. So, it is. Yep. Yeah, if I could jump in, like our perspective in the ecosystem is we have technology partners like up and down the stack, and we rely on partners like Cisco, HCL, and Aero to bring composed solutions to market. And now we have new motion, motions coming into play. So I don't know if any of you heard about VLM this week, <laughs> or Inference Server, or LMD. Um, we just announced new like Red Hat validated models. We're gonna be providing like a self-service capability for partners in the second half of this year. Like these are new waves of new motions with new ecosystem partners, but also like we're gonna have to work in a coordinated fashion to bring all of that to market. I mean, and, it, and it's really important that we're all on the same page, right? Because only together do we get to that outcome point for the customer. So this whole AI space is going to change. And the key thing customers are looking for is who is the partner who can guide them through that change as they take this journey? Because 
So how are we going to be in lockstep to help them with confidence through that journey? So Red Hat is driving distinct go-to-market strategies around AI, which all of you have seen. I wanted to ask about how this is playing out for you. What's working in it? What's not working in it? And I'm going to start with you, Matt. Great. So it's working. Um, and you know, our focus is really, again, as I mentioned, kind of continuing to be accelerating the successes for all of us, right? So you know, you guys have invested to help us develop and deliver the solutions more rapidly with products like Rail AI that certainly has helped speed up development cycles, products like AI, um, OpenShift AI, I should say, and that's helped us with our clients really scale, but also maintaining performance and security. Um, and recently, one of our partners, to give you a specific example, took um, an offering that combines AI developer agents uh, with an AI that actually writes code along with real AI, and they were able to reduce development time by 50%, which is oh, awesome. Cool. Um, we've seen some partners that have deployed OpenShift AI in a managed environment, and that has delivered 35% faster release cycles, which has saved about 15% of the cost that they were investing in junior developers. So our growth is 100% dependent on the success of the partners, and again, we're going to continue to invest in accelerating their success, and that means success for all of us. So I, I love hearing these business outcomes that you got in there, right? Because that's where it's at. Them in. I know. Worked them in. <laughs> Thomas, how about you? Well, we love the ecosystem. Like Cisco loves the ecosystem. We have been partnering since decades. Data center, cloud, now AI. What we really love is the open source roots and the collaboration in open source, like driving that innovation together, but then also the go-to-market side, taking that innovation, delivering real customer outcomes. I think this combination is very unique in this ecosystem and what we really, really love. And we're seeing first success of that as well. Like we're seeing whether this is on the AI on virtualization side, we're seeing open source and open winning together, whether this is Cisco AI pods plus OpenShift AI plus Cisco AI defense to make it secure, or on the virtualization side, Cisco UCS, OpenShift, Cisco Isovalent, networking to drive seamless virtualization migration. Those are like wins we have together that I feel come from the open source roots. How about you, Alan? Well, I think this is the most important topic, quite frankly, right? The, the reality that AI is a massive inflection point and nothing will ever be the same again uh, in our industry. And the, the thing that people often overlook, right, in our own AI labs and HCL Tech, we've We've delivered over 500 Gen AI in now agentic projects, wow. right? Yes. Now, do not be mistaken, it is not technology leaders that are coming into these labs. It's business leaders. Often it's the chief executive or another C-level um, leader who will own both the vision but the business model impact of AI in their organization. So these people buy outcomes. They don't buy technology. So we see this rapid movement away. And it's important for all of us as ecosystem partners we have to move away from selling technology services. We have to sell outcomes. It requires all of us to adopt a different posture when engaging with clients, the way that we sell, the way that we deliver, the way that we operate solutions now. We have to shift to this kind of AI native posture. But one key example, really, and this is where Red Hat is, is winning well for us, is clients often want to talk about optionality. Right? And you think, well, what is optionality? Optionality is when a senior business leader says to you, I will not allow this company to be locked into any single vendor. This is a strategic investment that we're making. Yep. We're effectively re-engineering the company around AI. So I need optionality. I need to be able to move my AI workloads to the cloud, on-prem, or to the edge. But I want control on that journey. And that is the perfect place for us to position the complete Red Hat stack, but obviously OpenShift AI in particular, now, now inference server, because that is how we give our clients optionality. And so combining kind of the points that you made, and I think this is, this is really important because I do think it's an inflection point. Like even we were having a discussion on Monday, we were talking about use cases, and depending upon your perspective, use cases can be different things, right? So coming together and working together on behalf of the customer is really, really important. And so we've heard this week how rapidly the world is changing in AI. What are you hearing from customers, right, around their priorities? And how do you see the, in specific, the Red Hat ad announcements that we've done this week 
How do you see that playing into the AI projects that you're having discussions with customers about? Matt, I'm going to start with you again. Great. So I would say a couple. Um, certainly, the exciting announcement around the Red Hat AI inference server, uh, it's going to continue to accelerate the partners and the customer's journey around AI, right? And most importantly, providing maximum efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, VLLM, we've said it, you said it. Um, it's certainly, I think, could become and is becoming the standard across the platforms. I mean, the amount of downloads that you guys have had since May 1, I mean, that blew my mind. Um, that chart earlier of the AI companies, Red Hat being what I'm sort of calling the connective tissue mm -hmm. between the ISVs, the hyperscalers, and then our friends at the chip suppliers. Uh, so it's really critical to continue to be cross-platform, increasing performance, right, like Alan said, and reduce the infrastructure impact and all while optimizing the models that are now available. So. I mean, really, I feel, and I love your term, connective tissue, right? But I, I love the idea that it allows us to interact with this ecosystem in a different way, yeah. right? Because, because this is a new technology stack. Thomas, how about you? Well, anytime I hear announcements, AI and open source, I'm super thrilled. So this has been <laughs> one of the best the weeks. Innovator yeah, in absolutely, you. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I really believe like AI needs to be open and open source based, right? And I think that's where we share excitement, so whether it's RHEL 10, the new AI capabilities, the LLMD project, which I'm sure we'll collaborate on together, uh, because we have been collaborating based on the same LLAMA models, the new AI inference server. I think that those are all examples how open drives innovation, and I think, as I mentioned before, open and open source and the best ecosystem will, I think, win AI. We're super excited about all of this, and I'm, I'm sure that we will bring this into our solutions that we bring to customers whether it is running AI anywhere, Cisco AI pods, RHEL 10, or OpenShift AI, what it is is making AI secure, um, AI inference server combining with Cisco AI defense, I can see immediate integration opportunities that drive real customer outcome. But, but what's really important to me personally is that I really believe repeating the success of Linux to AI will, be, will unlock everything and will be the key. There's so much we have learned together in the community creating Linux. If we reapply that to AI, yeah. I think we will win as a community and ecosystem. Yeah, we yeah. love that. I know, no, Ryan's like. <laughs> 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 Alan, how about you? Well, I, I think the announcements this week were very timely, actually, Stephanie, right? The, the speed at which this journey is moving is, is far faster than any of us really expected. And, yeah. and along with that speed, you need to appreciate that many clients have stopped the experimentation, right? They've done all the experimentation they need to do. Yep. The pressure we're now all under is to get these things into production as quickly as possible, right? And we're not talking about relatively small AI projects. These are businesses that are going to re-engineer themselves around AI and agentic AI in particular. So, for example, right, inference server, absolutely perfect for what our clients expect, that ability to take these global scale AI workloads across any kind of variety of platform is, is absolutely perfect for what we see in the market today. Excellent. So I totally agree, like it's tops down, right? And they're saying like, we're moving into production. Um, it's really driven by the CEO and they're looking for like that business function transformation mm -hmm. overall. Mm -hmm. um, behind that, of course, there's like the, how do you engineer the transformation? And so that is also coming in waves of technology change. And so it's really amazing to see what's happening in Agentic for like, how do you actually encapsulate that business transformation? Then you look at the run side of it with inference. And then you have below that, these new paradigms and how you deliver infrastructure with these AI factories. Like, all aspects of these are gonna to have to work together in a coordinated fashion. And it's Red Hat and our ecosystem, not just our ecosystem, that are gonna to have to work together in a coordinated fashion to deliver on that promise of that overall business transformation back to that C-suite. So I really wanna thank all of you, right? We often hear, and last year we heard like, we wanna hear more from other partners and what they're doing with customers and how we're working together. So the skills that all of you bring to the table are vital. So I really appreciate you spending the time to talk thank through you. and share the story. You can tell the passion comes through when we talk about AI. So thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent.